Muhammad Ali is considered by many the greatest boxer in history. He's a global icon not only for what he did in boxing, but also for what he did outside. He made his professional debut on October 29, 1960, and retired on December 11, 1981, with a record of 56 wins and 5 losses. In 1984, Ali was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. He was hospitalized on June 2, 2016, with a respiratory illness. Though his condition was initially described as fair, it worsened, and he died the following day at the age of 74 from septic shock. My big idol passed a couple of days ago, it was Muhammad Ali. For me, he was a big inspiration, he was my idol. This was one of my dreams to meet him, but it will not happen. But what he did for in the ring, outside ring, nobody will reach halfway of what he did. He put it color, not for one country, he put it color for the whole world and what he stood for. So he's a big inspiration to, to take after. <laughs> this is one of my role models, one of my others in sport and outside the sport also, Muhammad Ali, of course. And uh, for me, this person was, he was talking, but what he said, he did. I mean, he had a big mouth, but he, he demonstrated also in the, in the ring, let's say. And, uh, and he was like, if you want to compare football with box, like Ronaldo, let's say. He stood up for his things, he believed in his things, and he never gave it up. He is global, he is, he is the man. Muhammad Ali was a guy that done what had not been done before. Changed the face, not, not only the face of his game, but the face of the world. You know, he was, a, he was outspoken, he fought, he fought for what he believed in, and that, uh, he was charismatic. He, 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 he was a, a legend, a hero, and I, I, I looked up to him. One of my first heroes was Muhammad Ali. Uh, when I was 11 years old, there was a group of people and they tried to attack me. And a fight broke out. And it was just me and one guy before, before everyone else jumped in on me. But we were fighting each other. And I slipped a punch and I, I, and I shuffled my shoulders and said, Muhammad Ali, and threw a shot. <laughs> And he rolled under the shot but fell into a knee and I ended up on top of him. So I'm at the call myself Muhammad Ali and I'm punching him in the head and then somebody came in and tried to kick me and then a whole group of them. I think that our comparison is not right. It's probably because of the fact that he was a champion, I'm a champion, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Muslim. It's not because of that, but what he did in the middle of the cage, I think that it's not right because of На тот момент, когда он был чемпионом, он же был, так скажем, другой расы. А в Америке на тот момент эта раса не воспринималась. Он, как он рассказывал в своей автобиографии, его даже не обслуживали в ресторанах, что он выбросил золотую медаль на свою по боксу. Ну, такие моменты тоже были. Но то, что он сделал, какой переворот, какое отношение он изменил к своей раке, несравнимо. И чтобы с ним сравниваться, я думаю, мне нужно будет вернуться в его годы и быть темнокожим. And listen, um, I always like to think I'm a bad motherfucker, vicious motherfucker. I'm a, I don't give a fuck, but um, that's a part of Ali. That's that's where he overshines me because I can't understand a man that's willing to just really die for this, you know. And I talk that shit, but he, he's the real dick. You know. Why does it make you emotional? Is it talking about him or the relation to you? Um, me, fuck me. Um, Ali's a giant. I, no way, there's no way other fighters can match him. He'll die for this shit. He'll die. I'm not gonna die for this. Mike, you're such a good dude. That's real talk. Ali's a savage. He's an animal. He's a different breed of person. He's not like us. As a kid, I, I, I gravitated towards him because he was a champion. But I only knew as a kid of what he did, what he did inside the ring. As I, could, as I got older and um, I started to be more knowledgeable about the sport, 
about sport in general and about the guys who laid the pay, uh, you know, paved the way for guys like myself. Um, I understood that um, he is the greatest of all time and he was the greatest of all time because of what he did outside of the ring. Um, obviously, we knew how great of a boxer he was, but I think that was only 20% of what, <laughs> what made him as great as he was. Um, what he stood for, I mean, it's a guy who um, basically had to give up a, a, a belt and relish everything that he had done because of what he believed in and, and ended up in jail because of his beliefs. Um, it's a guy who stood up for uh, so many different um, things throughout the times where it was so difficult for African Americans to even walk in the streets. And um, for an athlete like myself today, uh, without Muhammad Ali, I wouldn't be sitting up here talking in front of you guys. We noticed on Twitter you only follow one person, Muhammad Ali. Why, do you, why did you pick him? He's obviously a hero of yours. He is a hero. He's been an inspiration of mine for many years. I first met him when I was six years old uh, in New Zealand, put me on his lap. I got the picture of it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm crying because I don't want to be, you know, I don't know that I'm in the presence of greatness. And he's kind of putting his fist to my face. And I grew up loving his showmanship, loving his... Um, his humanity, his humility, loving his athletic prowess, loving his coolness um, and his swag. When I was a rookie in the WWE, 1996, we were at a big function and no one knew who I was. And had, you know, one of those things where I had my own name tag, you know, like, hello, I am Rocky Maivia and Ali was sitting down and uh, I said, I'd love to go over and say hello to him. So I went over to him and um, uh, introduced myself, and um, as I was pulling away, he kind of pulled me back in, and he whispered, um, can you rumble? <laughs> and I, I said, yeah, I think I can. Yes, he's like, oh, okay, cool. So, cut to 1998, I, I started calling myself the People's Champion in honor of him. Yep. Um, when I was wrestling in Louisville, Kentucky, his family came to watch me wrestle, and um, I talked to his wife at that time, and I said, please tell Muhammad, it's only out of respect that I call myself that. And I'd stop it right now if he doesn't like it. And she goes, oh no, he loves it. Awesome. You, okay. Yeah, he wants you to call yourself that. So, that's why. I became very friendly with Muhammad Ali in the 70s. And Muhammad Ali worked his butt off. And I saw it firsthand. And I remember that there was a sports writer that was there in the gym when he was working out and he was doing sit-ups. And they asked him, how many sit-ups do you do? And he said, I don't start counting until it hurts. Now think about that. He doesn't start counting his sit-ups until he feels pain. That's when he starts counting. That is working hard. You saw him on television, there was no one more beautiful. You saw him walking down the street, he was a beautiful thing to see. What a phenomenon. You had to see him, even if you pulled against him, you wanted, to be a, you wanted to be a part of it. He moved around the ring, he had style and class, he was tall and good looking. Everything you'd want from a boxer, wrestler, football player. And to be honest with you, he belonged to the arts because he had poem, poetry, he had it all. I got into the ring when I fought him expecting a big brute or somebody who could box, who could jab, who could punch. I didn't find any of that. But what I did find was a presence like none other. You could do whatever you wanted to do. He was going to be on his feet for the next round. Never seen that, much, that kind of presence in a human being. I don't think our sport will ever be the same again. I think Muhammad Ali and I did something for the world because people in Saudi Arabia, China, Japan, all over Africa, Europe, they all stood up at weird hours of the morning and night to see that fight. And they looked at it from Africa and they saw two men contending. One was supposed to win and the other had no chance. And they were shocked to see the, the Muhammad Ali win that fight. Muhammad Ali didn't have a lot of muscles. He wasn't all that strong. I'd been in a ring with stronger human beings. But this man's presence dominated that fight. That presence, you could hit him where you hit everyone else, but he was not willing to fall. He was not willing to be counted out.